I'm a little nervous. I haven't really felt nervous in a while. And today, I thought I would try and fly from somewhere new. You may be able to hear the sleepies in my voice because it is early. It's the 4th of July, so I had to come out for a little bit of a freedom flight. <laughs> And the only good place I see launch is in the middle of this road that I don't really see many people coming down. So I figured I'd just launch and land right here, which is somewhere right off the Oregon Mountains. I'm just going to make it a quick flight because... No one really knows where I'm at. Maybe send my location to my girlfriend. Oh, all right. So I'm going to hike my wing up the road. God forbid a fucking car comes. It's beautiful right here. I think this looks good. This would be so freaking awkward if somebody comes up this road. <laughs> like, he broke down? I was like, yeah, I broke down. Gotta fly to somewhere, somewhere where I can get some help. Don't run over my wing. Got some new shoes too. Checking the line. Okay, all the lines were clear. Let's do this road launch. No cars. scene <laughs> look at my LZ let's do a fly by the LZ hell yeah Woo. the reason that I went on this flight this morning as opposed to just going to the field that I normally fly from is because Windy was projecting that the forecast, it was forecasting high winds at 9 o'clock. And so being that it was 6 and, and the wind was supposed to gust to 30 at 9 o'clock, I decided to find a place on the map that had just better weather. So over here, the gust factor goes to like 15 miles per hour instead of 30 which is a lot more manageable. And so, I figured why not um, just send it. It's, it's only 30 minutes from my house to get here. But I, I don't know, I'm kind of on the border of where things are projected to be good all day. Back home, which is this direction, that's Texas over there. And then over here is the Oregon Mountains. Look at this trail. I can hit this with my dirt bike. Actually, I've been here. I've, I've tried to find this trail on my dirt bike. But when I cross over into New Mexico, there gets to be this like part of the path that's really not well defined. 
And to traverse through this, it's one thing to go over landing on a dirt bike through desert, but for in some parts it gets so thick and it's not like you're just busting through branches. It's you're busting through cactus and thorns and shit, so it's not really my bag. <laughs> What's this flat over here? I really haven't flown here before because I'm not a cross-country flyer. Oh, and there's campers. I'll give them their space. I don't want to with, you know. They may think the paraglider or paramotor is cool from a distance, but it's their 4th of July and maybe they want to sleep in. Check it out. I'm paraparked over this awesome, it looks like a watering hole if it had water in it, but it looks like a dried, a dried up, uh, Leave it in the comment box what you would call this bit of terrain. Here, you know what? I'll try and gain some altitude. And I want to know what this topographical feature would be. I took geography at the University of Texas. Such a cool class. Uh, the University of Texas El Paso. Go Miners. Uh, <laughs> look at how smooth this is. Remember how nasty I said it was over there, or it was gonna get? But if I, if I park my brakes, do you see that wing like moving at all? It's like not twitchy. Okay. Don't need to get too low. There's a lot of critics out there. Look at that. That's so cool. I think it's a chupacabra. Whoa, yeah, baby. Ah, uh, man, it probably got away now. Oh, there it is. No. Look at that little guy. Hey, little guy. Oh, man, that's cool. See if I can change the angle. There we go. One more flyby before I give this little cutie a heart attack, which isn't the case. <laughs> that won't happen. Oh, there he is. There he is. Must be spinning through my own weight. I'm not really familiar with this area, though I, I'm like almost certain. Like, Anybody who says they know something with certainty is really confident, but I don't think you need to be 100%. I think just 99.999% percent sure that there are no power lines right here. Uh, just using like my awareness of how the electrical grid is formed here, there's just two main um, uh, power lines. I mean, one main power line that runs uh, east-west and then if there's like no infrastructure over this way, then it's very unlikely that there's gonna be some sort of a perpendicular electrical path. And I think, you know, a lot of these like isolated locations are actually using like underground wires, especially if they're like bigger facilities. I think they just don't want anything to mess with their secure line. Oh, it smells like cow poop. Does anybody else listening to this like the smell of a, of a barn? Or like just a, a farm that has cattle? Like, be it horses or some steer, some bulls, yep. Yeah. It's 
going to whip it around these beautiful Ocotillos. Hey, also, if you're interested in getting into flying paramotors, check out our podcast. Mine my, and a couple of my buddies do a podcast called The Paramotor Podcast. Shouldn't be too hard to remember. I made it easy for simple folks like myself to remember. Anyways, let's take this cut. The Paramotor Podcast is a weekly episode, and I connect with paramotorists all over the world. And uh, there's just a huge wealth of information. Uh, we tell jokes, we have fun, we talk about injuries, deaths that have occurred in the sport as rare as they are because paramotoring is really safe. Learning technology, wing reviews, paramotors. I've, I've had a, a couple of the paramotor manufacturers on the show at this point to include uh, Gilo Cardozo, who is the creator of this, the Parajet, as well as Miroslav Svek, who created the Scout, which is the machine that Tucker got flies on. And both of them are exceptional dudes with a die-hard passion for flying machines. So if you haven't gave it a listen already, head on over to any podcast app, like the Apple Podcast app, Google Play, Stitcher. Shit, it's even on Spotify. All right, I'm back at my improvised runway. Check it out. All right, Redneck 359er Echo Sierra, this is Paramount Buck Fan Flying Machine requesting a straight in approach on runway. Ah, uh, Desert Road. <laughs> and that's definitely my tailwind. So I'm just going to loop it in. It's not going to be a straight in approach today, baby. All right, it is clear westbound. That's west. Let's check east. And east is looking good, folks. So I'm going to do perform some S-turns. the one footer and off the road yeah baby yeah that was so cool and yeah check that out what a great flight that was and that's how it's done folks look both ways when you cross the road that's not a paramotoring tip that's just a tip for life <laughs>